Metroid Prime Federation Force is a new spin-off from the critically acclaimed Metroid Prime Trilogy. Taking place after Metroid 3, the Space Pirates are up to no good again, and it's up to the Galactic Federation Force to find some way to counteract them. So the question now is, does this controversial game excel at what it does? The story is a follow-up to the 2007 Metroid Prime 3, so if you have not played that game, you will not understand some references or plot details. Planet Phase has been destroyed, finally getting rid of the Phazon Menace. The Space Pirate activity has been very quiet, but that doesn't mean they aren't a threat. The Galactic Federation created an elite squadron known as the Federation Force, containing highly trained marines taking control of mech suits to combat some of the tougher members of the Space Pirates. The story is very simple, but works for what it's trying to do. If you want more detail, you can scan computer stations scattered throughout missions to get some context as to what happened to the area before you arrived. It makes the areas you visit feel like real places where people inhabit it and makes you become more curious as to what it was like beforehand. An example of this is a research station that has been nearly destroyed, yet one computer still functions and tells you what took place. You visualize what it was like before the creatures attack. If the player doesn't care about the mission logs, they can just skip them and keep playing. This makes the story non-intrusive and almost a reward for exploring. For what it was, it conveyed what it was trying to do properly. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about the presentation, as it doesn't convey the atmosphere very well. The graphics are very simple, and because of that, all the details you would find in an atmospheric experience are missing due to the fact that the areas are very cartoony. The music tries to be very atmospheric, and it works for what the game wants to be, but it doesn't match the environments. The art style in and of itself is not bad, but what the game wants to convey needed something with more detail. However, this is the only area the game falters quite a bit in. The gameplay is heavily focused on customizing your mech suit, playing online or locally with friends, and fast-paced first-person shooting action. The game is set up with a mission-based structure where you're in an arena for about 10 to 30 minutes, and when you're done, you leave and move on to the next mission. Soon after playing the game, you'll be able to choose missions out of order, giving a sense of non-linearity. Not only that, the mission variety is very good, as you'll be focusing on different types of puzzles for taking down enemies. The game rewards you by killing as many enemies as possible, completing it as fast as you can, and finding all the collectibles. If you complete the mission meeting its requirements, you can get all three of that mission's medals. However, it is very hard when doing it solo, since a lot of levels are built around two to four people doing tasks together to make the levels go by faster than they would. That doesn't mean the game is impossible by yourself, but the completionist may want to find some people to play with. However, that alone is insufficient as you can customize your mech suit to do more damage, auto repair when your health drops to zero, fit it with more defense, or more room to use more weapons. Before a mission, you can fill up your arsenal with a variety of weapons such as the iconic ice beam, missiles, or even the wonderful super missiles. You're limited to a small amount of space, but as you continue on throughout your adventure, you'll be able to upgrade that. Customization doesn't stop at the mods, as you can give your mech suit a new paint job that you can unlock by completing different missions. The online mode for this game is probably the optimal way to experience Metroid Prime Federation Force, as the missions are mostly based around tasks that can be completed faster if more than one person. This aspect of the game is done really well, since the online is very stable with little stuttering and disconnects. The only downside is the lack of voice chat, so you're forced to choose from a list of prompts to get your friend's attention. This can cause the gameplay to get very hectic and make it harder to communicate with your teammates. The only other mode this game has to offer is the Blast Ball mode, which 3DS owners have had access to for a couple of weeks now. It is a 3 vs 3 mode where you compete in a game of soccer using Metroid Prime Federation Force mechanics. You shoot the ball across the arena to score a goal. You'll gain power-ups during the match to gain the upper hand over your opponent, but if you lose all your health, you'll be ejected out of the mech suit and you'll have to quickly run back to it, which could place a handicap on your team. It's a fun distraction, but you won't be missing out much if you choose not to play this mode. Finally, the controls for the game are the weakest point of the gameplay experience. The control setup is simple. A to shoot, B to jump, Y to use your sub-weapons, L to lock on, R to activate free aim, and using the gyroscope to aim. The scheme works well, but because of the way the 3DS is shaped, it has caused some hand cramps to occur and required a break to make the feeling go away. There are other control options, so try to use what works best for you. 
Overall, Metroid Prime Federation Force fails to give a truly atmospheric experience due to its presentation being held back by the art style they chose. The gameplay more than makes up for the downsides and is definitely worth getting if you're looking for a fun experience. I'm glad I gave this game a chance. And that does it for our review of Metroid Prime Federation Force. To see a full written review by our reviewer, be sure to check out our website, GamingGamma.com. A link to the review will be provided down in the description bar below. And be sure to subscribe for future reviews and Let's Plays on this channel. And as always, everyone, this is GammaLad signing off.